Who will save us? Where is St. George? Where are you, George? And here he is. Yes, it's George. Charlie George. Superstar. Where's Frilly Knickers and a Playtex bra? <laughs> but can he see off the monster? Yes, yes, yes he can. Come on, come on, Charlie. Yes, and off we go there. Now, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, we couldn't afford the red arrows, but instead, please welcome the red Poirots. <laughs> They magnificent. Only eight inches apart. What a formation. There they go, not an inch between them. Fantastic. <laughs> and now, could you please welcome some of the great players from England's past? First of all, please welcome Tony Woodcock. <laughs> Played for England between 1978 and 86 and won 42 caps. Next, please put your hands together for Mick Shannon. Yes, Mick won 46 caps between 1973 and 1978. And finally, put your hands together and welcome Terry Butcher. Captain Courageous himself with... 77 caps between 1980 and 1990. We're in it together forever. We're in it together forever. And here Welcome to European Fantasy Football League. You don't think the new titles are too laddish? Well, I did yeah. enjoy filming them, though. No, that's true. <laughs> Ten grand, yeah. worth every penny. <laughs> uh, this week we'll be recreating a famous England-Scotland clash from the 1970s. And we'll be saying a big hello to Eric Cantona. <laughs> hello! hello! <laughs> but first, a few things we noticed from watching the European Championships this week. Now, a number of teams have held hands during the national anthem. But only three blokes did that in the Italian team. That's because they were the only ones with arms in the Italian team. <laughs> They'd give anything to be able to clap, yeah. those blokes. And the RSPCA have warned that if you must take your pet guinea pig along to a football match, the only way to stop it getting alarmed by all the noise is to keep stroking it. <laughs> And in the Czech Republic game last Sunday, John Motson was particularly critical of the two strikers substituted by Germany. So Bierhoff's got a short time to press his claims now that the uh, two other strikers who started the match have both been taken off. Kuntz. <laughs> A bit harsh, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. No, oh, Stato. And now it's time for my Euro Guess Fact File. Here is my short video dossier on tonight's guest. Representing Scotland is morning TV queen and long-time Dundee United fan, Lorraine Kelly. The thing Lorraine hates about football most is spitting, but enjoys nothing more than after-match analysis in the pub. I 
Our second guest tonight, representing Spain, is Michael Robinson. Michael became one of Britain's most expensive players in 1979 when Malcolm Allison brought him to Manchester City. Stopping at Brighton and notably Liverpool, Michael finished at Queen's Park Rangers before joining Spanish club Osasuna in 1987. In his playing days, Michael was more than modest. I don't like to see myself on television. But after finishing his career, Michael achieved the unique feat of becoming the first English player to present a foreign TV programme. His show, El Dia Después, the day after, is now the most popular football show in Spain. Have you had a nice break? Yeah, enjoyed it a lot. What have you been up to, mate? Well, I've been preparing myself for these European Championships, so doing a bit of research. Mm -hmm. Have you seen these? Yeah. These are very nice, aren't they? You know? They had the new Stato t -shirt. Nine Statos on your chest. Because <laughs> we had a number one single. Honest. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. No, no. No, there's no need. There's no need. Hey? Yeah. For One a week. week, yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Thank and you, mate. And then the bloody Fugees. Thank you, Bruno Brooks. <laughs> the Fugees. Which is like the Bee Gees in very hot weather. <laughs> <laughs> the bloody Roberta Flax killing me softly with his song. Is it about Jeff Astle, that song? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what else happened while we were away? Yeah, what else did happen? Look, it's nothing personal, lad. I mean, I, I'd like to hold on to you, but, uh, well, you must admit, your form has gone off a bit just lately. It's that Skinner and Bedell. I hate them. Especially that specky git with a fat neck. <laughs> oh, it's that brummy twat I can't stand. Of course, uh, they're gay, you know. <laughs> oh, oh I, that's well known. Oh, and what about that stupid song? Oh, yeah, David Baddiel's got a good voice, hasn't he? <laughs> so many jokes, so many snooze, and all I know, so oh. many Hey, 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 you need to talk about jokes and sneers. Yeah, oh. I mean, if you've got two blokes slagging you off on the telly each week, it's bound to affect your form. Exactly. You don't know if they've been saying anything about Salenzi, do you? <laughs> They make me sick. Yeah, they make me sick. <laughs> that skin is a bastard, bitch. I wish I could come up with some way of making his life a misery. I'll help you in any way I can, boss. Well, you could always sign for West Brom. <laughs> no, I think you're going abroad. I've heard rumours that some Dutch clubs are interested. Aye, I've heard the Dutch fans are really looking forward to it. Thanks for standing by me, boss. Oh, I, don't, I don't care what anyone thinks. I know in my heart of hearts that everything they've said is unjust and unfounded. <laughs> Jason, 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 hold it. Look, I've got a confession to make. The fact is, I had to sell you. I've been spending a lot of money just lately. On what? These. That could be him. Could be him. Oh could be Jace. God. At last. No, it's Lorraine Kelly and Michael Robinson. Oh, my. Lorraine Kelly and Michael Robinson. Lorraine Kelly and Michael Robinson. Lorraine Kelly and Michael Robinson. Great Welcome. to see you. Welcome Hi. to England. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Marvellous. You've been here before, Lorraine? Right? Yeah, yeah, I have It's alright, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is, it's, it's a real foreign country, though. I mean, it's so different. When I first came down here, I used to see the back pages of the sports, 
sports pages and it would say United have spent you know so many million pounds on some wonderful player and I would get all excited and of course it's Manchester United mm. and then you'd see the Dons are doing you know some great renovation and I would think it was Aberdeen you're spending money and it was Wimbledon and it was very confusing. I but don't I remember that. Yeah. Head, remember the, <laughs> <laughs> what renovation was that? A new seat. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think of Scotland as a foreign country, but um, oh, they bloody will on Saturday. <laughs> 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 they will. 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 They it must have been strange for you, Michael, when you first went out for that. When did you you, went, you played for a Spanish side? Yeah, uh, Osasuna, that was in uh, January 87. I only thought of going there for a short time and then coming back. And Then I went to sell some television rights to Canal Plus one day and they just said, would you like to present football for us and uh, write a show called El Dia Después, which we right. do. And so um, presenting, I wasn't too sure about. Yeah, because... But in Spanish, that must... Well, they wouldn't understand me in English. No. We've yes. <laughs> <laughs> got your book, actually, Michael. That's in Spanish as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't in it. Well, I'll read a bit, if you like. <laughs> Go on. Don't for me in the Lego, Paragami, La Quella, Pedro, Pero, La Mena, Stop, and Italia, Sorriero, Yo, Yadu, Quento, Cante, Per, Por, Que, Cod, Le, Calle, Singo, and You're Winning. That was a serious bit. That was a serious oh, bit. I beg your pardon. So was it true? <laughs> <laughs> do you speak a foreign language, Dato, at all? Because you're always travelling around the world. Do you, foreign do you languages speak... should be better than they are. Your foreign language should be better than they are? Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what you say in English isn't that great. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. That's not... I hang on his every word. Do you? Just, do just a bit of spit. <laughs> no, no spitting. Oh, no, no, no spitting. Don't like Sorry, spitting. you're quite right. But, and I ate that as well. And I ate that, you know, the old... Oh, it's horrible. Oh, that is I know. That, you know. And they always seem to do it right in front of the camera. You know, they do that one, and it's like, oh, dear. Oh, no. Thanks of all nations. Oh, and they're like this. Sometimes in, in the wind. It's like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it'll go on across the shirt. Oh, oh no, 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 we don't like, we don't like that. No, we don't. Maybe like you did it though, as a player. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 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 I mean, it wouldn't take much to have a wee hanky up their sleeve. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's a very exactly. good point. Exactly. Like a grandma does. <laughs> Look at that. Every so often. Maybe a bit of lice. Mm, exactly. Lovely. I could just hold it, say, there. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, one of the first um, English footballers to go abroad, well, he wasn't actually English, he was sort of all South African, I think, or something, but Eddie Fermani, do you remember him that played for Charlton? No. <laughs> and, uh, of course, he, he went to play for uh, Sampdoria, and this was in the 50s, he was one of the pioneers, and he had to learn a whole new lifestyle, uh, as you did, and we've, uh, it was difficult, you know, changing to an old co new culture, and we've got a picture of Eddie Fermani here, and here he is in 1955, getting into his car backwards. Now he goes by car. There's Eddie. Go on, you can do it. <laughs> there you are, you see. <laughs> that was so cultural changes, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> Took months. Uh, yeah, apparently. Of course, uh, one, one person you may have heard of, the only other English sports person you can think of who really did well in Spain was Henry Higgins. Bullfighter. He's a bullfighter. Do you watch any bullfighting? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I hated it when I first went there. Yeah. And then bit by bit I started getting into it because our television channel bought uh, San Isidro, which is like the. World Cup of bullfighting, if you like, in Madrid. So there's a World Cup of bullfighting? Well, no, what it is, is... In did, it, did the Aberdeen <laughs> Angus go out in the first round? No. <laughs> oh, did you be? That's real. Terrible. Did you get some Saturday? Did you be humiliated? Oh, you can get your own back on Saturday. <laughs> we will. If, we, if England lost, and this is the Sunday repeat, people are watching, and they'll be going, oh, yeah, you're funny, you're laughing, you're funny. You're funny, you're funny, you're funny. In Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were, you were saying. No, it's not, like, it's not a world championship. For, the Bulls always lose, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's but more for the bullfighters. For about three weeks in Madrid, uh, it's San Isidro. Madrid. Sorry. Yeah. I'd like that. It's very good. Uh, for about... <laughs> <laughs> it was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> for... Not as good as a wee hanky. <laughs> 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 all right. 
<laughs> for about three weeks. All the best bullfights in the world um, go to Madrid. And uh, it's a very critical people in Madrid. They always throw everything at the bullfight. And if you seem to do well in, in Madrid, it's just finished now, uh, you consider to be the best. Or you went, they bloody fortunes. Yeah. You don't have to kill the bull, you see, in Portugal, in bullfighting, this is true. When the, they don't kill the bull at the end, they just bring on some cows, yeah. and that calms the bull down. That's it calms it down. It does. And I've always wondered why that, because what must be going through the bull's mind? It's like, sort of, rrr, rrr, rrr. oh, it's the ladies. Hello, <laughs> 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 girl. <laughs> Henry Higgins. And we had a look yeah. at Henry Higgins' bullfighting, and we started to think that he may have been cheating a bit. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Fooled everybody in Spain. Yeah, apparently. they yeah. should do it like that. Yeah. Of course, uh, when the cows came on, that bloke had to shag them, which was a. <laughs> really? oh, sorry, Lorraine. They don't on TV AM, do they? My goodness me, no. But it's not just uh, it's not just Scots who come to England, is it? English people go to Scotland. So. Well, ap apparently there was uh, an English bloke went up there and. Um, he went to one of these Highland Games. Have you ever been to one of those? And oh, he, of course, all the time. We all do. Well, of course. Well, he had, he had a cultural problem because he thought that tossing the cave back meant that you had to try and catch it as well. Eh? <laughs> really? Here, we've got a, got a shot of him here. Here he comes, any minute now. <laughs> no, mate! Oh, no. <laughs> so, Michael, El Dia de Fuez. So El Dia de Fuez. Right? How long has it been so. running for? Six, six years. And it's a big hit, isn't it? It's sort of quite similar to our programme. In that, you know, you take the piss out of Spanish football and stuff like that. Just to give our audience a flavour of one of your shows, here's a clip from one of your shows. And this is an elderly Kelter fan who suddenly finds it necessary to take his teeth out. <laughs> Quick shout, we're back in. He does it every week, it's easy. I think he just wants to go on the telly. Yeah. But what is it? Apparently, it's true, they've got like um, a moat that separates the pitch from the fans, yeah? And, uh, Did he put some big sterident in that moat? <laughs> <laughs> he's, lost them, he's lost them, apparently, on a number of occasions. Really? Well, I, don't, I mean, I watched this clip, we watched this, and Dave thought it was hilarious, and I couldn't see anything strange about it. But yeah, that's because you've got about four teeth. <laughs> yes, he's got about. Show the, show the camera. Oh, yeah. that's, that's where they end, look like right that. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. Frank is going to have to have full teeth mm -mm. very soon. Yeah. You see that? Look at that. No one else on television has got so few I'll teeth. Yeah. This is an absolutely true story. When I was 15, I went to the dentist and I had six teeth out. You know, he knocked me out with the needle in the arm thing. And that night, I swear, I swear this is true. When I went to bed that night, my underpants were on back to front. <laughs> <laughs> honest. No, honest. Now, I'm not, it might well have been, you know, that I was a bit nervous that morning at the dentist and I just quick, I put him on back and front. <laughs> but I never, I've never done it before and I've never done it since, but I swear to you that's absolutely true. I never, and, and what worried me was the footprints on the unrest when I woke up. <laughs> But that, no, that, that bit is a joke. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's true about the underpants. Is and it? It's, it's is true? I, I swear that's true, yeah. It's always been at the back of my mind. Oh, I'm mind. a bit frightened now. You go back every week now, do you? No, no. <laughs> You're still right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Lorraine, you've worked with some of our favourite people. Yeah. So, yeah, you have absolutely. Richard Keyes. Oh, Keyes, the oh, hairiest man Keezy. in the world. Oh, Keyes. Hairiest man. One time, you know, at, at in TVM, Europe, at, yeah. in the whole of the, the universe, yeah. one time he was getting changed and we had we all sort of shared this wee dressing room. Oh, oh the Keyes. He's getting changed. He was getting changed and I walked into what, the dressing into room. into a werewolf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, he is a werewolf. He's not to change into a werewolf. And I went in and he was standing there just about with nothing on. I didn't see all of these hairy bits, but, you know, he was covered up a wee How bit. How would you know when he had nothing on, though? Well, actually, that's the <laughs> point. That is the point. But you could almost see the hair growing. It used to sort of all come out here <laughs> and all sort of out here as well. He is the hairiest man in the world. He's like one of those Play-Doh fun factories. <laughs> <laughs> well, you thought it was Henry Kelly, or I'm a big Yeah, fan. no relation, but... What am I? Mm. I know. That's <laughs> <laughs> There's a strange story about Henry Kelly. I don't know if you know this, but you know, have you seen that film, The Fly? Oh yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. If you remember, he gets in a machine, and a fly gets mm. in there as well, and there's a terrible mix-up. And what comes out is like the two mixed together. Yeah, it's horrible. Well, apparently Henry Kelly got into the fly machine uh -huh. with Frank Clark. Oh no. Right? 
And then what came out at the end, you had to work with him as well. Oh. It's a terrible mix. We, we got there. there. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, Mike Morris, he's great, great fun. He's a really good guy. He's really mm. good. Have you done your Panini album? Oh, yeah, figures? I've got them. Um, no, I haven't. No. I've filmed one in totally. Yeah. I have to say, um, I've looked through this many times, the Ryan, and I think Scotland have got the ugliest team. No, they have not. <laughs> <laughs> How can you say that? How can you say that when you've got Gaza on your side who's got a face that could open bottles? How can you say that? Doors <laughs> open bottles. <laughs> 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 That's look, not at them. Fair. Look, at, look at Pat Nevin on this. There. There's nothing wrong look, with Pat look, Nevin. Look at Pat Nevin. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's quite sweet. Pat, Pat's thinking, I don't think I'll bother putting the chin on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andy Gorham. Look, someone called to Andy, yeah, Andy Gorham. Oh, Andy. <laughs> That's an unfortunate. That's picture. that over here, Andy. And he is slightly yeah. round, but he's, he's handsome. And Andy. Jim Lighton there. Jim Lighton in the Panini. <laughs> look! <laughs> What is Jim Layton no, chewing? That's a terrible look at that, that, If you look at that again, though, that is... Isn't Let me that, see it again. If Stuart well, Pearce did, did heroin. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually had, we had a lot of trouble actually getting people to represent countries, you know. A lot of trouble there. Two. Yeah, before you, we were going to have the crankies. Well, thanks. <laughs> 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 and Abby Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who else did we are? Bernard Matthews for Turkey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was just stupid. That was stupid, actually. After his performance on Saturday, we thought we might ask, we might ask Darren Anderson to represent Switzerland. But, um... <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 terrible. He should have gone off. Why did McManaman go off? Exactly. Oh, come on. Yeah. Sorry. Don't argue with the gaffer. Yeah. Nejdit Sally. For Turkey. Who yeah. used to be Ali Osman oh, in East yeah. Enders. Oh, yeah. I remember Turkey. him. Yeah. Well, and the only, only other Turkey... Hugh Grant for Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Lugs a gobble. <laughs> Look! <laughs> The only other I Turkish person. Up. No, that means. No, I don't. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> only other Turk we could think of was uh, the guy who played Roland in Grange Hill. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, his real name is Erkan Mustafa. <laughs> <laughs> could that be? I don't know. Who on earth is that? Divine Brown? Mm. Good <laughs> Lord! Mustafa! Erkan Mustafa! Erkan Mustafa! Brilliant. Roland. Like it. Uh, Roland, are you still in bad manners or what? Yeah, just about. <laughs> Goodness me. So, Erkan, welcome to our thank program. You. How are you, mate? I'm oh, very well, thank you. Have you got, you've got Excuse turkey me. shaved into the side of your head? Yes, I have. Actually, can, can we get a shot of Erkan with Stato in the background? Because it's a bit... <laughs> it's a bit double vision. It's a bit... <laughs> it's a bit Teddy I'm Sheringham after a night of faces. Or... <laughs> so, haven't I seen you on the M40 on uh, several lorries? Uh, possibly, yeah. Listen, this is you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfair. So, do you remember doing a Just Say No? Uh, so I want to call you Roland all the time. In fact, I want to call you Roland, which is a, <laughs> a clip of the Grange Hill Mobs video for Just the Say mob. No. The Mob, yeah. Just Say No. Brilliant, eh? Oh, yeah. fantastic, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you actually follow Turkish football um, regularly? You're a Galatasaray. That's right, fan. yeah. They're a good side. Very be Well, one of the best in Turkey, to be honest. Sunas managed Galatasaray, didn't they? Yeah, but... Well, I had uh, Sunas once. He was in the, the Liverpool dressing room and he got a terrible uh, shock when he looked in the mirror. <laughs> And now it's time for Euro Phoenix from the Flames. This week, Gordon McQueen. Oh. So, Gordon, we're here to recreate your role in England versus Scotland from 1977, when Scotland won 2-1 and the Scots fans invaded the pitch. Oh, no, that was just a one-off thing. Not according to John Motson. The scene is so typically Scottish. <laughs> ah, but John Motson's always had it in for us. The scene is so typically Scottish. The scene is so typically Scottish. The scene is so typically Scottish. 
and you two are no better if you're talking about Scottish goalkeepers. Alan Ruff, a great goalkeeper and very caring. The first thing he did when I got injured was kick the ball into touch. Yeah, but he missed. <laughs> the Queen is injured in the goal now. Tell us about your goal. Well, it was a Nisa Hartford free kick in the left. And I remember jumping up for it and um, colliding with Emily Hughes. He was in the way up, but I was in the way down at the time. <laughs> and knocking it past um, Ray Clemens' right hand into the bottom corner. OK, then. Well, I'll be Ray Clements, Dave, you'll be Isa Hartford, and uh, you'll be Gordon McQueen. Well, the hairstyle's changed a bit. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll sort that out. Good. Well, Don Revy wanted them to play in a particular way, and that was the thing about Don. Once he said something, he stuck to it. And you have your good times and bad times, and when you have any bad times, you've got to be stand up and be counted. And I've never run away from criticism. A few weeks after this defeat, he shocked English supporters by taking a lucrative tax-free post as manager of the United Arab Emirates. What about the facilities as far as playing, you know, the pitches? I mean, they're all sand at the moment. They're all very much sand at the moment. Blimey, pitches made of sand. I wonder how he sorted that out. Yeah, well, never mind that. What about the behaviour of your fans, Gordon? I mean, it wasn't so much a pitch invasion as a pitch removal. <laughs> OK, then, let's uh, recreate the pitch invasion. So, uh, I'll be a drunk Scottish bloke. Dave, you be a drunk Scottish bloke. And, Gordon, you be a, a drunk Scottish bloke. OK. They've even knocked the goals down and broken the crossbar. They've even knocked the goals down and broken the crossbar. There you are, Mr. Revy. Right, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> All right. Now, you tell the Sheikh to get that leg and I'll be over in a couple of weeks. <laughs> 1977 was the worst. I mean, it was Jubilee year and everything. What a time to upset the royal family. All right, all right. But it was the England captain, Emmeline Hughes, who upset the royal family most. What do you mean? Princess Anne never stopped laughing at him on a question of sport. She did when she noticed he wasn't wearing any trousers or pants. Um... So it's not one of the Whitakers? We think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so thanks to Lorraine and to Michael and, and to Cam for coming along and yeah. best of luck to um, Spain and Turkey in the European Championship. <laughs> <laughs> Next week's guests are <laughs> Mr Baxter and Alan Humphreys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me, who's that now? Who can that be? Soon find out. Mm. All right, Jeff. Hello, Frank. How are you, mate? How are you, mate? All right. <laughs> Have you, uh, have you come as the Red Poirot? I have, I'm looking very smart this week, mate. Fantastic. Jeff Astle, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be a part of the crowd. Just be who you are and stand up proud. Just say no. No! Just say no, say no. No! Just say no. Don't listen, don't listen to anyone else. All you gotta do is be with yourself. Don't listen, don't listen to anyone else. All I got to do is yourself. Was it me who made you do it? You didn't have the need. First a taste, then a craving, then it turns to greed. Calling me your main man, you don't really understand. After all you did to me, expecting me to shake your hand.
Elizabeth. Where is St. George? Where are you, George? And here he is. Yes, it's George. Charlie George. Superstar. Where's Frilly Nickers and a Playtex bra? But can he see off the monster? Yes, yes, yes he can. Come on, come on, Charlie. Yes, and off we go there. Now, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, we couldn't afford the red arrows, but instead, please welcome the red Poirots. <laughs> They're magnificent, only eight inches apart. What a formation. There they go, not an inch between them, fantastic. <laughs> well, that's the few things we noticed from watching the European Championships this week. Now, a number of teams have held hands during the national anthem, but only three blokes did that in the Italian team. That's because they were the only ones with arms in the Italian team. <laughs> They'd give anything to be able to clap. Yeah. <laughs> and the RSPCA have warned that if you must take your pet guinea pig along to a football match, the only way to stop it getting alarmed by all the noise is to keep stroking it. <laughs> and in the Czech Republic game last Sunday, John Motson was particularly critical of the two strikers substituted by Germany. So Welcome to European Fantasy Football League. You don't think the new titles are too laddish? Well, I did yeah. enjoy filming them, though. No, that's true. <laughs> Ten grand, yeah. worth every penny. <laughs> uh, this week we'll be recreating a famous England-Scotland clash from the 1970s. And we'll be saying a big hello to Eric Cantona. <laughs> hello! hello! <laughs> but for now, could you please welcome some of the great players from England's past? First of all, please welcome Tony Woodcock. <laughs> Played for England between 1978 and 86 and won 42 caps. Next, please put your hands together for Mick Shannon. Yes, Mick won 46 caps between 1973 and 1978. And finally, put your hands together and welcome Terry Butcher. <laughs> Captain Courageous himself with... 77 caps between 1980 and 1990. 